Well, hi guys, it's an MK4 here with the Sony Xperia Z along the right hand side and the mighty Samsung Galaxy Note 2 along the left hand side. In this video, we're going to do a GPS test between both the devices, see how many satellites I can lock onto, and actually see how many of them are in the sky above. Just before we get started, just like to point out that both the devices have their power saving modes turned off. So on the Galaxy Note 2, you can see power saving mode is not enabled, and on the Xperia Z, if we go to settings, power management and you'll see all the various modes for power saving are turned off. GPS is also turned off at the moment so we'll get that turned on in Xperia Z and also get it turned on from the Galaxy Note 2's notification bar. Next thing we need to do is load up the application. I'm using GPS Test Plus which is the paid for version but you can download the just the standard free version which is called GPS Test from the Android Play Store and see what your device gets. So here we go, 3, 2, 1, go! I think I've got that relatively at the same sort of time, so we'll wait and load the screens. And the Galaxy Note 2 loads a screen ever so slightly ahead of their Xperia Z, but you can see that they instantly showed the green signal, which means they locked on onto a satellite straight away. So much of a muchness between both the devices. But you can see on the Note 2, it's showing in view of 17 satellites in comparison to the 22 of the Xperia Z, and the Z using 14 of those 22 in comparison to the 16 which are in use from the Galaxy Note 2. In the middle of the screen you'll see a bar chart of all the satellites which are currently in use and their signal to noise ratio figures and underneath that you'll see the signal to noise ratio chart which basically means the lower the noise the better the signal obviously the higher the noise the worse the signal. Moving back to the top of the screen now under accuracy the Xperia Z showing accurate to 10 feet in comparison to the Galaxy Note 2 showing accurate to 26 now going down to 13 and slowly rising. Now the devices are both settled down they're both in view of the same so 22 and using about the same give or take a couple here or there. We'll switch over to satellite view now or as I'll call it radar view and we'll get to see what the satellites are positioned like in the sky above. You can see the orientation of the north on both the devices ever so slightly different. On the Xperia Z it's straight ahead and straight pretty much uh, compared to the Galaxy Note 2 it's towards uh, the right hand side so ever so slightly different. I don't know if the components are orientated slightly different within the, the chassis of the phones themselves. Just below the radar satellite view it gives you a first fixed arm of how long it took to lock onto the first satellite that it saw. The Xperia Z shown 2 seconds in comparison to the Galaxy Note 2 showing 3 seconds but as we saw it was very minimal between the two hardly noticing the difference. I don't think I've specifically mentioned this but radar satellite view basically gives us the satellite positions in the sky above on a rotating compass that's why you can see them jiggling about a little bit. Next up we'll go to location view which essentially gives us a current location on a map of the planet showing the, the current position of the sun in terms of day and night hours on a transitional curve as you can see here. Towards the tops of each device there you've got the longitude and latitude settings which are currently blurred out. Incidentally they're exactly the same apart from the Sony Xperia Z has a couple of degrees difference there in terms of latitude. Next up is the speed screen. Along the bottom of each device you can see zeros there. That's the speed screen just showing that we're not moving about. So if you click inside of it you can see the specifics of the speed screen which essentially shows the speed, heading and altitude of each device. Along the tops you can see speed as being zero in terms of miles an hour which is good because we're not actually moving about. On the Sony Xperia Z it's shown that heading as 356, 357 as it moves about a little bit there. In comparison to the Galaxy Note 2 which is quite sporadic uh, between 328 and 330. The Xperia Z showing their feet in terms of altitude at 300 which is a little bit a difference away from the Galaxy Note 2 at 351. So the devices are quite sporadic between those figures between them. But I would tend to trust a device that has locked onto the most satellites with the better signals. And the final screen we're going to go onto here is the time zone screen. So on here you'll be able to see what the current time is being read from the GPS sensor as well as what the local time is in each respective device's time zone depending on where it is as well as the sunset and sunrise times in each device's location. As you can see both the device's date and time readings are exactly the same because both handsets are in exactly the same location. And if we head on back over to the main screen now, we'll be able to see that the Galaxy Note 2 is showing an accuracy of 20 feet, fluctuating between 20 and 39 really. And the Sony Xperia Z has a steady 30 feet accuracy. And as we saw earlier, the Sony Xperia Z is still in view of the 22 satellites that we saw earlier. I'm currently using 10 of those, so just uh, about half of what it can actually see it's using. In comparison to the Galaxy Note 2, in view of 16, that's dropped down a little bit to what we saw earlier, and it's using about 7 or 8 of the currently viewed satellites. And going back to the satellite view, 
you can see there the Sony Xperia Z showing that it took two seconds to lock onto the first satellite that it saw. Now I think it was ever so slightly slower than the Galaxy Note 2 in loading the application, but it's saying it locked onto the first satellite faster than the Galaxy Note 2, which came in at three seconds. And that was a GPS test run on the newly released Sony Xperia Z and the mighty Samsung Galaxy Note 2. As I say, you can download the GPS test application free from the Android Play Store run it on your device and see what readings you get back. Any comments or questions you guys have got, hit them up in the comment section down below there. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and you like what you saw. If you haven't already done so, hit subscribe. It's also down there as well. It doesn't cost you a penny and it's totally free. And you can also check out some of our forthcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Have a wicked day and we'll see you next time.